Hi friends, it's Miss Lynn from the Action Arts and Science program at the Washington Pavilion, and I am super excited about our brand new unit, Shake, Rattle, and Roll. And you guessed it, we're gonna do some things that shake, rattle, and roll over the next few weeks. We're gonna kick off this unit with a lesson on earthquake-proof buildings. So we're gonna be examining um, how earthquakes are formed and how they occur, and then how we can design buildings to withstand them. But first, we're gonna start with a book. So if you haven't read this book, Earthquakes, yet, I want you to pause this video, read the book, and then come back. So as you saw in the book, earthquakes happen because the plates deep into the earth begin to move and shift, and that causes energy waves to move. There are two kinds of waves when an earthquake is happening. One wave is called the primary wave, or a P wave for short, and that happens when the wave is moving the same direction okay, as the earth. And so if you look at my slinky here, kind of shows you how the waves move along in the same direction. Now, the second kind of wave is called an S wave or a shear wave. I like to think of it as the secondary wave. And that is a wave that goes back and forth this way. So it's moving in a different direction than the actual earth would be during the earthquake. So two ways that the earthquake will happen. And then depending on which kind of wave is going, that's the different kind of destruction or damage we might see either inside the earth, on the surface of the earth, or to buildings and other things that are on top of the earth. So as we're looking at earthquakes and what they can cause, we want to think about um, how to design buildings to withstand them. There are certain areas of the earth that are more prone to earthquakes, and so buildings need to be designed and built differently in those areas than say in South Dakota. And so thinking back to our previous unit in Build It Big when we were designing and building things, uh, we're gonna do it a little bit differently this time. We're gonna use straws and tape and craft sticks like we've used before, but your materials are going to be a little bit more um, unlimited, so to speak. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly how many straws to use or exactly how many sticks to use. I'm gonna let you and the group that you're working with decide how many um, of each that you need. Something to keep in mind though is that while you can choose how many materials you want to use, there's only so many materials for your entire class. So as you're planning and designing your building, and I would recommend you draw it out first, um, don't take more than you need, okay? Don't be wasteful. Plan ahead, take what you need, and then if you don't use something, put it back for the group, okay? So we've got sticks, we've got straws, you've also got some index cards when you're designing and building your building. And there's certain requirements that your building has to have. It needs to be at least 30 centimeters high, which is the length of a ruler. So mine that I made here is a little bit taller, which is fine. It needs to have three floors or three levels. So I've got one here, one here, and one here. And then each of the two upper floors needs to hold um, at least 50 grams of weight. And so as I was looking through my closet of things that I could weigh, um, I came across these blocks and five of them weigh about 50 grams. So each of the two floors in the middle need to support five blocks, okay? So I've built mine here. I do used um, a little bit of a triangle design because triangles are a stronger shape and then I'm gonna put some index cards in the middle or on the floors to hopefully hold my blocks in place. Now, I could tape those on there. I'm gonna see what happens if I don't. I may have to go like this. All right, so I'm gonna put weight on them. There we go. And I'd put weight on the second floor too. And that's really cool but that doesn't show me if it's going to withstand an earthquake. So we're actually gonna use a shake table. In the supplies that I've dropped off um, at your program are two pieces of cardboard, four racket balls, and two rubber bands. And you actually put them together kind of like a sandwich um, to make a shake table. And once it's built, you can pull on one side of it and it will shake. So that's how we're gonna test our buildings. 
And so as each of your groups finishes your building, bring it over to the shake table. We're gonna put our weights on them. And you may have to experiment with how you wanna place your weights. And you don't wanna tape them uh, to your actual building because the rest of your group is going to use them also. So they just need to be on there. I'm not sure this is gonna survive. I may have to go back to the drawing board after my test, but that's okay. Engineers often don't make buildings that are perfect the first time. That's why they build models and use computer software often to design their buildings before they're actually built full scale. All right, so I've got mine set here. We're gonna do three um, poles or three shakes. One is just going to be a little shake and that is the four shock, okay? I'm gonna do just a little one, Ooh, okay. The second one you're gonna do is the actual big shock, okay? So that's like the major part of the earthquake. Okay, half my building is still standing. And then the third one you're gonna do is another small one, which is called the aftershock. Okay, so now as you can see, they don't always work the first time. So if I'm gonna fix this, I'm gonna figure out a way that I can make this part more stable and hold those blocks together better and then I'll come back and test it again. I'm really hoping that you guys will take some photos of what you do this week and send them to me so that I can take a look. I'm excited to see what you do.